Hi guys, um, I'm going to talk a little bit about the subject for this week, which is federalism. Um, we're transitioning from the chapter on the Constitution to the chapter on federalism. Those two are real closely intertwined, as you know. Um, I guess one of the things I should um, wrap up with on the Constitution is that once the thing was ratified and put in place and so on, the founders of the United States did not want the Constitution to be changed constantly, and they did not want it to be a, the toy for each political group taking control uh, in Washington. In many countries in the world, as soon as a, a political party wins an election, um, assuming that they are the opposite, opposite party from the one that was in power, they change the entire constitution. They have a new constitution and they stick in their values and views and then when they get voted out or overthrown or whatever, the next group does the same. The founders wanted to write a document that was very difficult to amend and you can see in the textbook that it is. They wanted something that's laid out, not partisan principles that were related to any political movement, but that were kind of American values, and that's what uh, sort of the American Constitution has been for all these years. Federalism was one of those values. Uh, the thing about federalism is, as you'll see in that chapter, um, it evolves. You can be, add things and take things away. There are certain powers that the federal government um, got uh, from the Constitution for itself and other powers that um, were given to the states and some that were shared. Well, why would we want to have federalism? Here's a map of uh, Canada, and Canada is a, a federal system, just like the United States. It has federalism, and um, the question is, why would Canada want to have a system like that? And the answer, quite frankly, is that Canada is a very big and pretty diverse country, that Canada has over here uh, a French-speaking part, which is um, fairly, let's call it restless, to use a nice word. Uh, French Canadians very often are looking uh, to see if they feel that the, the rest of Canada is respecting them and is basically um, taking care of their interests. So French-speaking Quebec wants a lot of autonomy. Uh, going all the way across, there are all kinds of different uh, um, economies and, and different values. The latest piece of the Canadian uh, federalism is this uh, Nunavut area up here, which is an area that was set aside for um, what the First Nation uh, people, the Canadians call their Native Americans uh, First Nation, because I guess they were the first uh, to really settle and control territory here. And so the um, Canadian uh, Native Americans, as we would call them, have their own uh, territory now because they have different values, different languages, you know, lots of things that are unique. And in federalism, what you want to do is keep a country together by giving potentially restless areas uh, a little power uh, of their own. India is a fe also a, a federal country, and here is a map of India and <clears throat> all the different states and, and, and other territories that make up um, Indian federalism. Um, as you know, and I discussed this uh, already <coughs> in, in some other material, Iraq, which is falling apart, which is a country with great internal divisions, is now... Um, thinking about or actually making the transition to federalism. Uh, Iraq um, has regional differences, religious differences, all kinds of things going on um, in the country. And by making federalism their system of government, they can give um, religious and ethnic and language groups uh, in their country uh, some, some freedom to basically uh, practice the, their own um, cultural values and so on. So I guess we're not going to go to take a look specifically at, at, at Iraq uh, um, in, in, in detail here because um, it's a little bit outside of our range. But um, this is a map that shows uh, different regions of the country uh, controlled uh, during the war by different groups and with different uh, international 
um, military groups um, in, in the country, and, and that is an indication, I guess, of the diversity that exists there. The other thing about federalism that I wanted to share with you was that in the United States, uh, we do have a lot of different uh, levels of government. In our textbook, we talk about the kind of 88,500 or some um, governments. They include school boards and states and, and, and counties and so on. So there's a lot of leveling all the way through the system. The third thing I want to talk about is when you look at the chapter uh, on federalism, you will find that there are different um, kinds of um, uh, practices of federalism, and some of them are uh, ways in which you basically give states uh, very specific resources from the federal government, and they have to use them on uh, certain projects. In other cases, you can give states some uh, money from the federal government and, and tell the states this is revenue sharing, and you can use this um, in ways that you think uh, will be uh, important for your state. Uh, and so we've had experiments, in other words, with different different ways of uh, managing the relationship between the federal government and the states. And I'm looking at our textbook here, and the one thing that you should understand is that um, over the years, between uh, 1920, which in this nice table that you have in the textbook, uh, you, can, you can go refer to that, 1920, of course, is the low point uh, over here, and then uh, on the high point, 2010 is uh, the, the latest bar. Um, the federal government has transferred a lot of revenue and resources uh, to the states. In some cases, uh, they, uh, they um, basically are trying to get the states to do things that the states either don't want to do or don't have the money to do. But there has been a, lot, a, a great rise in the role of the federal government. There's another wonderful table here, which is a table that shows you the size of the federal government over state uh, and, and the local governments. And the, the bigger one shows you um, in green how the size of the federal government has, has grown tremendously uh, from the first image, which is uh, 1927. In 1927, you can see that the red is the, is the largest, and that was local governments. So in those days, local governments were really important and did a lot of stuff. Uh, that's changed quite a bit. Um, local governments now, uh, relative to the size of the federal government, have, um, have shrunk quite a bit. So uh, if you go through, take a look at some of the key words that are in the margins, those are always something that I recommend that you should study. Um, I think that you will understand federalism. I think it's um, an interesting topic and not really uh, too confusing and difficult to understand. So uh, see you guys in class. Uh, the weather in Iowa.